State Buckeyes. The 1985 Florida Citrus Bowl Classic is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by Federal Express, why fool around with anyone else? Welcome to Orlando, Florida. The 40th Citrus Bowl, used to be called the Tangerine Bowl, from jam-packed Orlando Stadium with BYU and Ohio State going at it. The temperature up near 70 degrees. It's improved from a rather cool couple of days ago, and we're happy to welcome you to this Citrus Bowl action this afternoon. Hello, everybody. Jay Randolph to call the play-by-play -play and alongside to analyze the action of this one, Dave Rowe. Dave, when we talk about BYU, BYU and Ohio State, two fine football teams and some big names. First of all, Robbie Bosco for BYU. Oh, boy, Jay, when you think Robbie Bosco, you think pass. This fella has passed over 500 times. His offense is averaging over 500 yards a game. He is going to have a great day in this weather. Well, another man who hopes to have a great day is a fellow who's had a frustrating season. Keith Byers, the big guy for Ohio State, is nearly 100% really healthy for the first time. For the first time in two weeks. He's had two weeks off. He should be at near 100%. He's only rushed for 218 yards, but Earl Bruce said that he thinks that Keith Byers is just going to have an outstanding day, and I look for him to rush for over 150 yards today. It's been a festive week down here. The teams have enjoyed Disney World and Epcot Center and SeaWorld, and they have had a tremendous time here. But as we near kickoff, you get the feeling that these two clubs are really set to go. Right now, we are set for the singing and playing of our national anthem. shapes up as a dandy this afternoon. It's been a wonderful week for the teams and the fans, and now we're set for the anticipation of this football game. One of the things we didn't talk about, a lot of big people at the line of scrimmage for both teams. Oh, boy, Jay, they have some monsters on that offensive line. Both offensive lines average over 270 pounds. I couldn't get over the size of them. This is almost like a pro game with these fellows out here, Jay. They really have some big size, and I really think that that size and that offensive line could be the determining factor in this game because that should be one of the big keys this ball game. Who controls the offense and defensive lines? There's Earl Bruce. His Ohio State Buckeyes won the toss. They're going to receive. They're in their red and white, and there is Lavelle Edwards, 54 years old, a native of Orem, Utah, the head coach of the Cougars. The Cougars, co-winners of the WAC, 7-1. And, and, of course, Ohio State, 8-3. 5-3 and three. Five and three in Big Ten play, losing to Illinois. And then those last two disappointing losses to Wisconsin and Michigan. The Cougars lost to UCLA, 27-24. And were upset by UTEP, 23-16. 
Robbie Bosco loosening up along the sidelines. Bosco, the senior from California. Jim Carsados will be the man who will lead the Buckeyes at quarterback. He's also a Californian. He's talking there with Earl Bruce. As a young man from Taranga, New Zealand, Mark Ormsby will put the ball in play. Ormsby, a rugby player, and a fellow who we chatted with yesterday, Dave. Very interesting fellow. Oh, yeah, I loved his accent. Had a wonderful accent. He told me yesterday, Jay, that he has kicked a 70-yard field goal and would like nothing better than to get a chance in this game to try one. Back to receive, 25, John Woldridge, and 42, Vince Workman. Workman averaging 20 yards per kickoff return. Woldridge, 22, and we are underway. This is Workman. The 10, 15, 20, breaks out at the 25, steps out at the 30, and down at the 34-yard line. Workman brought down on the play by Richard Hobbs. 34-yard return. Arsados with Byers and Cooper. Carter, the fine receiver, Lanise, the tight end, Taggart for Ohio State. Mags, big guy at center. Hake, Gilmore, Graves, and Cotterman. First down for the Buckeyes, 34-yard line. Arsados to throw, and it's complete. At the 41-yard line, Chris Carter. Carter caught 53 passes through the season, pickup of eight. Smith, Knight, and Buck are in the defensive line for BYU. Sanders, Whittingham, White, and Govea. And then Ladenko, Sherman, Sprouls, and Thomas are the defensive backs. Ohio State comes right out throwing, picks up eight, second down and two. That's Lanise coming in motion. Tarsados has time. Going long. Incomplete. Trying to go for Carter down the sideline. The coverage down there by Rodney Thomas, number three. And, Jay, we have a real battle going on in the center there. Bob Maggs from Ohio State is outweighs Ken Smith by about 50 pounds in the center. You can see number 65 there against 71. That should be a big play today. Whether they determine who's going to decide the, the actual control of that line, and that's going to be a big key, Jay. Maggs has had some back spasms. Third down and two. That's Harris in the game now, and he comes in motion. And the pitch back to Byers. First down. Byers gets two tough yards to the outside. Byers, the senior from Dayton, Ohio. We talked to him earlier this week. Uh, the doctors are considering putting a pin in that injured foot of his. A decision to be made in the next couple of weeks. And Jay, that 218 yards that he has this year, that is not indicative of the talent that this young man has. When he is running healthy, he's averaging over four and a half to five yards per carry. And he looks very healthy out there today. First down at the 45-yard line. Lanise back in there. A little shovel goes to Cooper. Cooper at midfield. And Cooper has a first down as he moves to the 42-yard line. Rob Ladenko, the strong safety, number nine, there to make the tackle a pickup of 14 yards. And Jay, this is an interesting pass because he drops back. It looks like no one's there. Now, you'll see 44 Cooper. He underhands the ball to him. Cooper just finds the seam, picks up a lot of yardage. A very interesting play for this Ohio State team early. Nate Harris back in at wide receiver, number one. That's him coming in motion again. A little delay. Myers. Myers trying to get outside. Couldn't do it. Coming up to make a wonderful play was the cornerback, Jeff Sprouls, number 25. He's a senior from La Canada, California. And, Jay, the first thing I looked at when I saw Byers here was a start to the left. Now, watch, he's going to cut all the way back. Now, this is the test on that foot injury, whether he can sprint to the outside. He looks like he has fine speed, but Sprouse comes up, makes a nice tackle, chops his legs out from him. But Byers looks like he has that speed he started the season with. 
Earl Bruce sending in the plays with the wide receivers, Lanise and Harris. Lanise, number one, back in the game. Carsados in trouble. Down he goes. Breaking across was Kurt Govea, number 34. A fierce pass rusher from Hawaii. In high school, he was the MVP on his high school team, not only on offense, but on defense. First time ever in that state's history to have a, a most valuable player on both sides. Said he liked to play quarterback and liked to tackle him, Jay. And the University of Hawaii didn't even offer him a scholarship. We're going to have third down coming up. 12.25 to play, first quarter, 40th Citrus Bowl here in Orlando, Florida. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are this afternoon. John Woolridge in the game number 25 at tailback now for Ohio State. Carsado slips, gets the pass away incomplete. He was trying to get it to Carter down at the 30-yard line. The ball came up way short as Carsado's had a little trouble with his footing. Ladenko and Thomas had the coverage. Well, Carter really did break a little bit into the open. You see he's pulling up short here. Now, he falls down also. They're not really used to running on this soft. It's a very soft field. It's, it's a bent grass field. It's very, very closely cut, so traction could play an important part in this game also, Jay. Tom Tupa, the putter, a sophomore, averaging 42.5, 44.1 net punting last year, the best in the nation. Tupa putting. Sikahema downfield, fair catch at the 15-yard line. So we've got a timeout here in the first quarter in Orlando. Brigham Young University and Ohio State, they're scoreless. Tom Hammond's on the sidelines. Citrus Bowl, 1985. Here comes BYU offensively first time this afternoon. They're missing... Kozlowski and Kelly, two of their fine offensive stars, both out with injuries. Bosco on first down. Bosco complete. Out at the 18-yard line, Scott Norberg, number 85, making the catch. Bosco with Emuli and Sikahema. It's Norberg, Bellini, and Mulaney. And then McCullough, Tidwell, Borgia, Wright, and Robinson in the offensive line. Big offensive line. Second down, seven at the 18-yard line. Bosco on the run, and he gets it out to Hamuli. Hamuli stopped short of the first down at the 25-yard line by Greg Rogan, number 29. Here's the defensive line for Ohio State. Ritter and Lee and Sullivan along with the other Lee over there. Byron, Byron Lee, Spielman, Johnson, and Kolick. Gordon White along with William White and Rogan. Third down and one. Sikahema, first down. Sikahema averaging 6.6 .6 per carry. Young man born in Tonga. We call them the Tonga Connection or the Tonga Twisters if you try to pronounce all of their names. Seven players from Tonga on this BYU team. Now watch Sikahema here, 23. He's going to get trees. going to try to get wide. Now he sees the seam. He knows what the yardage is, cuts back inside. That is one little tough kid out there. He is, he is a dynamite player for this team. Chris Spielman, a very intense competitor at linebacker, 36, made the tackle. First down for the Cougars. In motion, Molini, the tight end. Little screen out to Hamuli. Hamuli's at the 32, and that's about as far as he can go as Pepper Johnson made the big play. We'll call his number a lot this afternoon, I figure, number 98. There's Hamuli. Seven yards average. And here's Pepper Johnson, number 98. Look at the range of motion he has. He has to get all the way back outside and pick up Hamuli outside. Now, he doesn't let him fake him out there, just chops out his legs. You know, it's funny, he wouldn't even smile yesterday during the picture taken, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have kidded him about leaving the state of Michigan to play at Ohio State. He's from Detroit. Second down. Ball batted. Incomplete. State defense had a 
big play there from John Sullivan, who's starting in place of Camaro today. Sullivan, 57 at the outside linebacker spot. And, Jay, I questioned why he started. I couldn't understand. Number 57 is a freshman. He's, he hasn't played a lot this season, but he makes a big play here. Of course, we know that Camaro has an ankle injury, and maybe that was a big factor in determination whether, why John Sullivan started in his place, but it was quite surprising to me. Third down and seven. Bosco, too high. He was trying to get it to Mark Bellini. Along the sideline, the coverage by Greg Rogan, 29. And Jay, Ohio State has really gone to an interesting defense. They're putting three men up on the line of scrimmage. They're dropping the nose man back into the short zone, and they're only rushing two defensive linemen, dropping nine deep to protect against Robbie Bosco and try to disrupt his passing game. Number 20 is Kevin Tal, a business major from Walnut Creek, California, a walk-on, averaging 41.2 per punt. Mike Lanise. The brilliant senior is back to receive. Lanise at the 23. Lanise at the 25, 30. Penalty marker down. Lanise out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Jay McDonald, number 97 there for BYU, but there is a marker down. It was a 45-yard punt, a 25 or a 20-yard return if it stands. Jay, that is going to go back against Ohio State. It was a clip on the play. But as you said, Lanise almost made it to that wall of blockers. They try to get outside, set up that wall, and he runs down the sideline. But there was one player who just didn't have the angle enough to hit the BYU player straight on. So it's a clip play. It's going to bring it back inside the 20. Clipping. The referee today is Vincent Price. Our officials from the Collegiate Independent Football Association and the ACC. Now there's the clip. You can see he just didn't get his head in front. He caught him in just the backside of his shoulder. Very, very close play. You saw the flag go in in our camera picture there. And it'll back Ohio State up. All just inside the 10-yard line. We'll take a timeout with 9.06 remaining first quarter. Center. Now he's going to drop back in the short zone. You'll see that the BYU men have nobody to block. They're all looking around. They're dropping nine men deep in coverage, trying to get pressure on Bosco with just two outside ends. Ready to go for Ohio State. John Woolridge is in the backfield now at tailback number 25, the junior from Akron, Ohio. He's averaged 4.9 per rush. In motion, that's Mike Lanise. And the give goes to George Cooper. Fires on the bench. And we get word that maybe that foot of his is bothering him. Let's go down to Tom Hammond. Tom. Jay Keith Fires, in fact, as you noted, was not in the game. After that first series, he had some pain in his foot. The foot was hurting him. The team doctor says they're going to hold him out for a while and see if it gets better, but he's on the sideline right now. Well, he had hoped to be ready to really roll today. Second down. That's Harris going in motion. Tarsados wants to put it up. He throws. It's complete. That is Vince Workman, freshman from Dublin, Ohio, who caught five passes during the regular season. Terry Whittingham, 53, the linebacker, making the tackle, a pickup of nine yards, first down. And, Jay, I hate to see Keith Byers on the sideline. In talking with him, he was really excited about this game. This was a showcase for him as become a professional. He was hoping for a big day. You can see the disappointment. He has had just the most frustrating season that anybody can possibly have. He said he didn't like people to use that word when they talked yeah, about know. it, but truly enough, that uh, is the way to describe it for him. It's been tough. Lanise goes wide to the right in motion. A little delay, and this is Woolridge. And he is barely back to the line of scrimmage. Might have lost a yard. Woldridge met on the play by Govea. Boy, he's a tough kid, number 34. He certainly is, and we talked about that battle in the middle between Mag, 71 of Ohio State, Ken Smith. They are really having a battle in there. You can see there's Mags, the center. He's picking up 65, Ken Smith. Now they're doubling on Smith because if they drive him back, they get the angle holes through the center. That's the big game plan for Ohio State, to run up the middle. These Cougars are more physical on defense these days than they were a couple of years ago. Second down and 11. Woolridge up 
the sideline, out of bounds. He got to the 26-yard line. Govea, 34, again there, along with Whittingham, 53. Jay, I was, I'm looking down at Keith Byers on the sideline as we look at that graphic on, on Workman. But there's the foot that they're trying to tape up, and they, you can see that he's taking off his shoe. That's got, he's got to be the saddest person of 60,000 people standing here. I know what that feeling's like. It's just like it's the most heartfelt feeling. He's so disappointed. I just can't express the feeling I have for him at this time. It's just, it's, it's just really a disappointment. Well, he talked about faith and his family and friends, how much they'd helped him this year with that problem. Here's a pass intended for Lanise, and it is incomplete. Jeff Sprouls, number 25, the left corner, had the coverage. That matchup of Lanise and or Harris against Sprouls will be a good one this afternoon. Yes, it will be. When they talk about defensive corners, and we have a flag on the play while we, while we talk about this, let's see what he has to say. Holding. Oh, it is going to be holding against Ohio State. But the point I wanted to make about Sprouls and the defensive secondary is coaches talk about the reaction time back to the ball. Anybody can backpedal, but how quickly can you get back to that receiver once they throw the ball? And Sprouls has really reacted really well so far in this game. The holding call is refused. Punting time for Tom Tupa. His net punting average of 40.3 yards this season, sixth best in the country. As we said, he topped the nation last year. All Big Ten from Brexville, Ohio. Probably the best punter that Ohio State has ever had. Tom Tupa. Isaac Ahema is back to receive it. A low, wobbly kick. Sikahima on the run at the 40. Breaks away at the 45. Midfield, right down the middle. One man to beat. Down he goes. And he fumbled. And it is recovered by Harrington. But well, you saw the speed of Sikahema. He can fly. Chris Carter made the tackle. Harrington came up with a fumble, and BYU's in good shape. And, Jay, any coach will tell you the first thing you want to do is break that initial wall. Sikahema does it. He's through the seam. The best way to pick up yardage is not to go wide, but go straight up the field. When you see that seam, makes just a fantastic run, picks up a big yard, and they're in scoring position. We'll take a timeout. There's no score. This is what a BMW computer says to its engine. And this is what a BMW engine does with that information. My wife was having our second child, and uh, so Anthony and I were on our own. And we went to the store, and I picked up a bargain baby shampoo, not Johnson's. I thought I was just helping out, but we used it, and Anthony got some shampoo in his eyes, and he began to cry. And uh, I felt awful. They may say baby shampoo, but many bargain brands sting, irritate eyes. Only Johnson says, no more tears. No more tears isn't just an ad slogan. It's very real. We're sticking with Johnson's. the sideline Keith Byers sitting at the end of the Ohio State bench they have retaped his foot and they hope to get him back in the game they hope to hold him out one series and see if it got better but during that first offensive series of the Buckeyes Byers did have pain in the foot the foot that caused him to miss most of this season now of course he is planning on perhaps having an operation done a pin inserted to strengthen it perhaps he can come back today they're not sure right now he's got it re gotten it retaped he's going to test it he's talking to the team doctor he may return he may not it's still in the air and many pro scouts are sitting in watching this one today. All right. BYU has David Miles, 26 at wide receiver. That's Bellini coming in motion. Hand off to Sikahema. And a fumble. Sikahema lost the football at the 15. And Ohio State says they have it. It was Pepper Johnson who came up with that football. And Lavelle Edwards sees a golden opportunity for his Cougars go down. Jay, turnovers will kill you faster than anything. You just cannot fumble the ball. Now watch 
Isaac Ahem, it's a slant action. He gets through the hole nicely. Now, you'll see on the tail end of this ball, see the ball just out there in the open? Good hit there, but the safety came up. The ball was ripped clean. Ouch, that really hurt BYU. William White was the man that dislodged the football. First down, Ohio State from their own 16-yard line. Pitch back comes to Woolridge. Woolridge gets to the 20 and is bumped out of bounds. Sproul's 25 and Mark Sherman, number five, were there to make the play. They're going to spot the ball right along the 20, and there's a penalty marker down. Oh, I see the penalty marker now, Dave, on the far sideline at about the 18. Holding again against Ohio State, so penalties hurting the Buckeyes' opportunities here in the early going to control the football and move the football the way they feel they need to do this afternoon. They have got to play ball control offense where they control the ball and use up the clock. You know, I, I've seen him jump off or twice have holding calls, and uh, Larry Cotterman, number 72, now he told me that he was going to jump off sides one time so his mom would uh, see him <laughs> and he could get managed, but he'd, so he'd get mentioned. <laughs> right now, let's pause. For station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Colorado's News Channel, KCNC TV, Denver. With Dave Rowe, Jay Randolph, Tom Hammonds along the sidelines, Keith Byers out of the football game with that foot injury again. Ohio State backed up now to their seven-yard line. 6.50 to play, first quarter, no score. Citrus Bowl, a 40th annual event from Orlando. receiver the pass was underthrown as Carsados was hit I think he was trying to get it to Lanise Sean Knight number 77 for the Cougars the man that banged in there yes it was a throw to Lanise but the ball just really came off of Carsados's hand wrong and it just kind of fluttered out they were really lucky that that ball was not intercepted you can maybe see it fluttering up there Carter makes a good try at it he really should have had it. It was, it was almost right in his hands. Carter comes into today's game needing three catches to set an Ohio State single-season reception record. Bill Anders set the previous record, 55 catches back in 66. Lanise goes to the far side. Woolridge. Woolridge to about the 12-yard line. Whittingham again, 53 there to make the tackle. And Jay, you talked about this Ohio State team passing more yardage than what they've run for. That's uncharacteristic of Ohio State. They say when Woody Hayes was there, he didn't even have passing gear in his car. <laughs> yes, we heard that from Lou Holtz yesterday, who gave a marvelous speech at the awards luncheon. Been a great week here in Orlando. The Citrus Bowl Committee and the Florida Citrus Association have just opened the doors with hospitality and fun for all of us. Carsados, fourth in national passing efficiency coming into today's game. A very poised leader. Third down now and 14. Complete to Vince Workman. Workman, the freshman, twice All-Ohio. A parade All-American in high school. Ten-yard pickup on the play. They're short of the first down, and Tupa will come on to do the punting again. Coverage that time by Thomas, number three, for BYU. There is Keith Byers. Keith, out of Dayton, Ohio, the senior. Sitting it out right now. By Sikahema. Downfield, the dangerous returner. Another one of the young men on the Cougar squad from Tonga. Tupa's kick. He comes up. Sekahema has it at the 45. Trying to get outside. And he makes it to the 49-yard line. He's an exciting performer. 36-yard punt. 8-yard return. The Cougars will have it with 5.45 remaining to be played in the first quarter. And we've got a timeout here, sold out Orlando Stadium. A look from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida, Captain Richard Daniels from Long Beach, California. At the controls up there, this is the 60th consecutive year that the Goodyear Blimps have covered America's major sporting events. Happy to have them on hand this afternoon. Bellini coming in motion. Bosco out to Trevor Molini. Across the 50 down to the 49 yard line. 
latest report on Byers is that he may not return this afternoon. That's tough, tough news. And Jay, we're talking about the defense of Ohio State and how they're mixing it up. Now, look at this. This is a linebacker, Larry Kolick, number 33. He's a linebacker playing a nose tackle, just trying to get that penetration. They are doing everything they can to disrupt the passing game of Robbie Bosco. Gets back and makes the tackle. The Buckeyes go into a prevent defense. Bosco. scene down there. Terry White, the safety, had the coverage. The pass just a little too long. And he read the pass just perfectly. You couldn't read a better pass play on that. He threw it just to, just over the outstretched fingertips. About six inches would have made a difference in that play. I want you, when we get a little farther along, to be able to talk about this passing offense of BYU and what they do differently than most college teams with their reads. It's really more like the pro game. It's a very sophisticated pro offense passing game. Third down, eight. Bosco, a lot of time, going for the long one again. Bellini, he was out of bounds, and the coverage, very good coverage by Rogan, the cornerback, number 29. Now here again, Jay, they've only rushing two defensive linemen on third down and long. There's 36. Now watch, he's going to drop back into coverage. He's back there rushing two linemen. They're saying, hey, we, we know that we can't rush you and frustrate you. We're going to drop nine bad men back and try to defend you. That's given up a lot to Robbie Bosco. Kevin Tal will do the punting. Mike Lanise, the Rhodes Scholar, back to receive. Oh, good-looking kick. And it stays inbound. It'll go into the end zone, out to the 20-yard line, where it will be first and 10. 49-yard punt, still no score. Defenses have done very well. Bosco has 13 yards passing. Carsado's 41. And Ohio State uh, is not giving the short passes to BYU. Absolutely, Jay. What they're doing is they're dropping men shallow back in the zones. They're bringing a nose man back, dropping him in the zone, and they're forcing Bosco to have to go long. When you play defense, you have to give up something. Today, they're going to give up the long pass to BYU. They're saying, if you can complete it long on us, go ahead, but we're not giving you the short ones. All right, Ohio State, first down from the 20. Carsados pitching back, and coming out to the 24-yard line is Woldridge. Woldridge hit on the play by Thomas, number three, and Sprouls, number five. Robbie Bosco, they're talking with him about what's happening out there. Now, Jay, he has a very quick mind. He's able to read defenses very well. I'm sure this is confusing him because of the short zone. He's used to throwing those little short passes out to his running backs, to his tight end coming across. Now he's having to throw long because he's seeing six people drop off the line of scrimmage, the linebackers in the defensive line. Lanise going in motion. Vince Workman. Workman gets a couple before Whittingham, 53, stalls him. He got out to the 27-yard line, maybe the 28. And, Jay, it's really important for Ohio State here to get back to their game plan. They've had a lot of steam taken out of them with Byers sitting down and being out. That really affects your offensive unit. Everybody looks around and says, oh, boy, what are we going to do now? It's really important that they get back to their game plan and do what they've done so well all season. I'm sure a lot of the fellows thought, well, Byers is ready to play, and we're going to have him, and now that has changed, and they do have to concentrate on what they need to do without him. Workman. Workman is out to the 31-yard line. Looks like he's got the first down. As Gary Whittingham, 53, and Kurt Gobea, 34, were there. And, Jay, when you have an offensive line like Ohio State said, has, the weight that they have, they are a huge offensive line. They have got to come out and play power football. They've got to each control their man on the line of scrimmage, play straight-ahead football. This is not finesse. This is straight-ahead power football. Barry Walker, number 43, is in the backfield, a junior from Lancaster, Ohio, now working with Vince Workman. Lanise coming in motion on first down. Carsados, lots of time. Throws, and it is complete to Chris Carter. Carter, first down at the 47-yard line. 16-yard pickup. As we 
told you he needed three for the record coming into today's game. Now, Jay, watch the tail end of this. You won't believe Carter how he's hit. The great receivers concentrate on the ball. Once they get hit, they squeeze that ball. Now, watch Carter. Up in the air, out of control, there's a hit. Spins around. Look at that concentration. Hold on that ball. Even puts his other hand over there to almost cradle it. Great reception by Chris Carter. Carter has caught two for 23. Back it up, behind the line. Doug Smith is in there now, replacing Carter. And a halfback pass incomplete. That was Doug Smith, actually. Penalty marker goes down. Smith coming around, trying to throw the pass. Steve Sanders, 59, was there on the play, had the coverage. Jay, we may have an ineligible lineman downfield because yep. the play took a long time. That's the signal, an yep. ineligible lineman downfield. This is a reverse with a pass. Now, you'll see the reverse action. Right there, you'll see it flip back to the wide receiver coming around. Now, he's looking. If he's What he's supposed to do is throw it right now, but he throws it a little bit late, throws it in the ground, and they've got a lineman downfield. That's loss of down. Visible receiver downfield, loss of down, five yards, second down. So it'll be second down from the 41-yard line. We have two minutes and 49 seconds left to play. A scoreless first quarter to this point. The Buckeyes and the Cougars. The 40th Citrus Bowl here in Orlando. Lanise is in motion, coming to the near sideline. Woolridge at the 45 slips down. Couple of these Ohio State players have had trouble with the footing. Uh, Sprouls and Thomas, number 25 and number three, converged to make the play. Actually, they spot the ball short of the 45 at the 44. Jay, when we walked out on the field, I was looking at the field, the high crown in the field. The crown is the center part of the field, with it, which causes the drainage. And they are running actually downhill. The grass is a very short cut grass. It's very, very, there's not much nap to it. So that you, you've talked about, there isn't much cutting ability. You can't use the grass. You have to plant those spikes in the turf and turn. Wonder if that had something to do with the injury to Byers. Lanise goes to the far sideline, and penalty markers go down. Delay of game. Ohio State. Referee Vincent Price. And there's an idea as we give you a look at the crown on this field. I think that shot there by our director Dick Klein and his crew gives you an idea of the situation down there. It is very severe, the crown on this playing field. Carter going to the left side. Lanise comes out to the right. Third down, 17 from the 39-yard line. And incomplete. Carsados threw into double coverage trying to get that ball to Lanise. And Lanise almost held on. Sanders 59 and Sprouls 25 were there. And Jay, the game plan of the BYU uh, defense is quite different than Ohio State. They're saying, hey, we're going to bring people. We're going to disrupt Corsardis. We're going to get back there and put a lot of pressure on him, force him to run around back in that pocket, try to disrupt this timing, and they're doing a good job of it. Tom Tupa will do the punting, and again, by Sikahema is back to receive. Sikahema, the speedster from Mesa, Arizona. Kick is away, and it's a beauty. Sikahema at the 12. Down he goes at the 10. Downfield for Ohio State making the big play. Scott Leach, a reserve linebacker, number eight. 49-yard punt. You said Sikahema went down. He almost went down without his head that time because Leach came in there and collared him right around the neck and just ripped him to the ground. Excellent coverage. That's the kind of ball that you almost say you ought to let go into the end zone because it's right on a 10-yard line. Most pro coaches will tell you, don't catch the ball there. Let it go into the end zone. The Cougars average better than 500 yards total offense, better than 33.5 points a game. Tom T. Upulotu is in the ball game, and there he is. Tui Boloto 
from San Mateo, California, number 46. Jeffrey Johnson, Chris Spielman, 98-36, made the stop, a pickup of about eight on the play. Tui Polo, two, 587 yards, 6.5 average during the season, another member of the group from Tonga. Yes, uh, we have a list of those Tonganese, I guess you'd call them. <laughs> One wonderful fellas, so a really pleasure to talk to them. Now Sikahema is back in there, and Sikahema looked like he didn't quite get the first down. John Sullivan, 57, the freshman who got the start this afternoon over Comerow because of the ankle injury, made the stop. It's going to be third down. And that's a play that Ohio State sees every day. Short, quick trap in there. They played it wonderfully. John Sullivan jammed down the trap, closed it, and Sikahema had nowhere to go. He just couldn't bounce it outside or inside. Just came up with no yardage. David Miles, number 26, in at wide receiver, replacing Norberg. This is Bellini coming in motion. Almost intercepted. Oh, right in the hands of Larry Kolick as Bosco was trying to go over the middle, and he just didn't see Kolick. Well, what Kolick is doing, Kolick, as he drops back, he's playing the eyes of Bosco. You'll see him right on top of the center. Now he's playing the eyes of Bosco. Bosco does a good job looking off there. Right there is Kolick to jump. Look at that, hits him right in the chest. That would have been a big play for Ohio State had they been able to intercept that ball. They were really lucky on BYU's team. Kevin Tao will do the punting. 14 seconds left in the first period. Lanise back to receive. A low kick. And they're going to let it go. It comes all the way inside the 40-yard line to the 38. And Ohio State will have it there. Jay, when I talked about him playing the eyes, it's really an interesting play. Now watch this. You'll see as he drops back, Kolick is over the center, number 33. Now when I say he's playing the eyes, he's looking at Bosco. Where Bosco looks, Bosco's looking to his right, comes back to his left, and there's Kolick. Watch him jump. That's the end of the first quarter with no score. 44-yard punt a moment ago. End of the first quarter, no score. The flashing numerals, 3-4. Quite a surprise up to this point. The defenses have prevailed. Jay, we talked about offense, about BYU averaging 500 yards per game. They are certainly not doing it in this first quarter. Ohio State has really confused BYU on offense. BYU's offense outscored their opponents by 20 points per game this season. Right now, we have a scoreless game as we move into the second quarter. Lanise in motion. Second man through Woldridge. Woldridge has a first down at the 50-yard line. Rob Ladenko, a senior from the city of Chillin, Washington, made the stop. 12-yard pickup. And Jay, that time, number 71, Bob Maggs of Ohio State wins the battle at the nose. You can see he gets into Ken Smith and turns him, drives him back. They did double-team him, but they just really blew him off the ball, and they were able to pick up that big yardage. And now at the nose, David Futrell, number 75, a sophomore from El Paso, Texas, in there for the Cougars. Woldridge gets a couple. Terry Whittingham, number 53, made the stop. Wooldridge was 728 yards and a 4.9 average, nine touchdowns out of Akron, Ohio, a junior. Jay, the one thing you want to have as a running back is vision into the hole. That time, Wooldridge just put down his head and was just going to plow ahead. Had he looked to his right, he had a big hole to his right, but yeah, that's tough down in there. When you're down in that, that's no man's land. Carter is flanked out to the right side at the top of the screen. Second down. They put Lanise in motion toward Carter. Tarsados throwing complete. Penalty marker down as Taggart, the tight end, made the catch for what would be a first down, but it may be an offside penalty. Whittingham 53 and Thomas 3 making the tackle for the Cougars. It may have been the man in motion offside. It was. He turned up just a touch early. You have to go along there, and if you can't hear that snap count, we've got a large crowd here. If you can't hear that snap count, you get out there a little ways, and all of a sudden you're, you're almost antsy to turn upfield, and he did just a, just a touch early. The penalty yardage 
And this will go against Ohio State, putting it back in their territory at the 48-yard line. Illegal motion, red, five yards, still second down. Vincent Price, our referee today, the officials from the Atlantic Coast Conference and the Independent Football Officiating Association, a split crew. 13 minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the first half. We're scoreless. Second down and 12. Vince Workman gets it to the 46-yard line. Rob Ladenko, the strong safety again, number nine, making the stop. Ladenko, who came out of Walla Walla Community College, 6'2", a senior. Four interceptions this year, and he had a touchdown for the defense. Very, very active at his position. Really comes up quickly, makes those tackles from a safety spot. Fills in there, just almost immediately comes up on that running play. Third down and six. Lanise comes in motion to the near side. Carsados throws out, and it is complete to Cooper. Cooper's got the first down. Fine effort by Cooper as he got it to the 37-yard line before he was tripped up by Whittingham, 53, and Ludenko, number nine. Nine-yard pickup on the play. Cooper, out of Wyandotte, New York, had caught 11 passes for only 82 yards coming into today's game, but looked good on that play. He certainly did, Jay, and I get the feeling that this Ohio State team has recovered from the injury of Byers. They're starting to get back in their game plan. Now it's important that BYU gets back into its disruption. The great teams are able to almost recover from adversity. Garzato shovels it to Cooper. Cooper gets to the 33-yard line. Big Jason Buck, number 99, along with Steve Sanders, 59, making the play. Jay, that's not as easy a play as it looks like because you're running, trying to look upfield, and the ball is tossed underhand to you, so it's almost right at your waist, and if you take your eye off it for just a second, you fumble it. Second down, and... 32-yard line. And of uh, going to Workman. And Workman can find nothing going on the right side as Ledenko makes a very fine play. There's a vintage Ledenko play. We talked about how quickly he comes up from the secondary position. He just really burrowed into Workman. You'll see him there, number nine. Now watch how quickly. He's way back to your left. He's a safety. Now as soon as Workman bounces outside, there he is. Boom. Comes up, good hit, holds the leg, drops him down for no yardage. Excellent play. Third down. They're four out of eight on third down situations. That was Rollridge, and I don't think he's got it. Oh, he comes up short as Jason Buck, number 99, put the wraps on him. Buck was a first-team All-American at Ricks College in Idaho. And... Let's see, are we going to have Spangler come in? We are. Rich Spangler, the senior from Geneva, Ohio, 290 career points. He'll be attempting a 47-yard field goal. Came into the Citrus Bowl, having missed four of his last six regular season field goal attempts. It's long enough. Eight plays, 32 yards, and getting the 47-yard field goal from Spangler. Ohio State will have Spangler kicking off to Sekahema and to John Oates. As you look at the Ohio State crew, Oates, who is back to receive number 82, ran into a cameraman, not one of our NBC cameramen, during the pregame, and he cut his mouth. We didn't know if he was going to be able to play or not. I don't know whether he had any stitches or not, but he was bleeding pretty good down there. Well, I'll there tell you, he is. I'll tell you, Jay, you couldn't keep a player out of this game. If he's healthy, he'll be out there playing. And as a wide receiver, you don't need your mouth. Look at the blood on the front of yeah, his shirt. Six stitches, I get word now. Boy, he did do some bleeding, didn't he? Woo! All right. Spangler kicks off. Sekahema, not going to bring it out. And BYU down three to nothing will start from the 20 yard line. The BYU high powered offense 
not yet been able to get on track here against Ohio State as we have 10 22 left to play first half passing yardage only 13 yards for BYU here in the early going but Jay I'll tell you this about Robbie Bosco they say he has a very quick mind can pick up defenses they're making changes and adjustments with him on the sideline he will still have a good day fear not that's Bellini going in motion a little delay and on the move Hamouli Hamouli near a first down at the 29 yard line where Pepper Johnson number 98 makes the play for the Buckeyes and Jay, that's one of the adjustments that they're making. Now, that was a little draw play to Hamouli. All they did is they're saying, okay, if you're not going to rush the lineman, you're going to drop him back, we're going to fool you with the draw. This is a cat and mouse game, back and forth. Adjustments on offense, adjustments on defense, back and forth. Hamouli is perhaps the most probable pro prospect down the road for BYU as a running back. Bosco on the run. First down. Robbie Bosco scrambling. Remember last year he was the Holiday Bowl MVP. The Cougars not playing in the Holiday Bowl the first time in seven years. Now watch this coverage here. You'll see that they're dropping their men deep. They're picking up all zone coverage. The pass is to the left of your screen there. Bosco has nobody. You see everybody, everyone in a white shirt has a red shirt waiting for him. They're dropping eight men back on that play. There's just no one to throw to. Bosco had to pick up the yardage on his own. That's not something that he does well, run with the ball. First down at the 30-yard line. Bosco wants to put it up. He does, and it is complete to Vaisikahema, and now incomplete. He did not hold that ball long enough. Sikahema caught 36 passes during the regular season. The coverage there by the Roverback, Sonny Gordon, number seven, a junior from Middletown, Ohio. And Pepper Johnson had a little bit something to do with that play, too, and the tail end of this. You just don't have time to take the ball in. You can see right there, in comes the coverage. Boom, he stuck him there. It's right Pepper Johnson. Now, Pepper Johnson said Sikahema is not going to be a factor in this game today. So far, he hasn't been, Jay. Bosco has thrown four straight incompletions. And a big play by Eric Comero. Comero just clipped Bosco on the shoe, or Robbie would have had a first down, I believe, out at about the 44. Now, they are really frustrating Bosco again. He's got no place to throw. You'll see he looks back. He's reading the coverage, looks to his right. He's got. He's going to roll out of here to get out of, the, out of the pressure. Now, watch Comero here. Just dives out, grabs one foot, stumbles Bosco, but look at the running room out in front of him. Wow, he would have picked up a first down, Jay. Third down coming up. The Cougars are one for four on third down conversions this afternoon. complete the Sikahema. He does not have enough for the first down at the 35-yard line. Greg Rogan, 29, made the play with Byron Lee, 82. And Jay, what you try to do as a defensive secondary is you try to take certain things away. Now this time, they're going to let Sikahema catch the ball underneath. You'll see him to the left of your screen. The pass goes out to him. Now look how quickly those red shirts are reacting to him. Boom, there's the first one. There's the second one coming in. There's a third one. Reaction to the ball is the name of the game when you play defensive secondary. Kevin Towell to do the punting. Mike Lanise back to receive. Another fine kick by Towell. Lanise at the 18. 20, out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Making the play was Shane Shumway down there for BYU. 45-yard punt. More in a moment. All right. It's going to be reevaluated at halftime. It's doubtful that he will return to the game for Ohio State. Here on the BYU side, Robbie Bosco and his offensive unit huddling with the coaches now, trying to get that passing game going. They're unable to get deep. They're unable to get the short completions. They're getting pressure on Bosco. So far, the Ohio State defense has baffled the BYU passing game. Jay? All right. Tom Hammond along the sidelines. Carsados. Throwing incomplete. And they may get him for Grounding the ball. Let's see what the call's going to be. Steve Sanders, 59, had him in the grass back there, of course. Vince Workman, 42, appeared to be the intended receiver. 
That's going to be holding. A yeah, holding they, call against Ohio State. It was a late play. You'll see it on the left of your screen here when Persado sees dropping back. Now, BYU's getting good pressure. It's going to be, a, looks as if it's going to be on the left part of your screen. Not there, but right there. See the jersey pulled back? Look at the referee. He looks at it, pulls out his flag, says, hey, you're holding. The Buckeyes of Ohio State lead this game on the strength of a 47-yard field goal by Spangler. We have 7.39 to play. First time. Illegal use of the hand. Red. Five yards. Decline. Second down. Jay, I wanted to make a note about that. It's an interesting thing. Now, I play professional football, and I always liked it when they said holding on number 73 right there, and they'd almost point to him. In college, of course, they just say on the red team or on the white team. <laughs> Boy, did you play professional football for how many teams? Five? Five teams, 13 years, but most notably with the Oakland Raiders. Oh, yes, old suitcase. Happy to have you with us here today. Off going to George Cooper, and Cooper met by Whittingham, 53. Cooper started the day with 560 yards and a 4.6 average, four touchdowns on the year. He is from Wyandotte, New York, a sophomore. The Buckeyes had to rebuild this offensive line for the 1985 season, and they really did quite a job. Uh, except for Graves, the senior, they've got Hake, a freshman, and Mags, the junior, Gilmore, a junior, Cotterman, a sophomore. They've done a good job. Third down. He was out of bounds was Vince Workman. Leon White, the linebacker, 41, had the coverage, but he took it in while he was on the white line. I just want to say I am really surprised about the play on the offense of both teams because when I looked at this game on paper, it looked as if e neither defense could stop the other team's offense, especially Ohio State trying to stop BYU's unbelievable passing attempt uh, game. But today, BYU has stopped Ohio State's running game. It's just been a, it's been a defensive struggle, something we didn't figure on, Jay. Well, there's still a good deal of football to be played. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Tupa. He just did get it away. Sikahema. Sikahema gets it to the 43-yard line, and that's where BYU will put it in play. 6.46 left to play in the first half. 38-yard punt. More in a moment. Give me a light. No, 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 no. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, thanks. you never know what you'll get. Nah, give me a light. No, Bud Light. Yo. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Whoa. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. A new idea, like a pebble in a pond, can change the world around it. Technology from a company... The life of a punter sometimes can really be exciting. Now watch Troy Long, number 28 from BYU. If he jumps out, he blocks it. Actually, Tupa kicked it underneath him rather than into his hands. That was really close to a big play. First down for the Cougars. Bosco gets it out to Hamuli, and he has a first down at the 45-yard line of Ohio State. Sonny Gordon, the rover man, and Chris Spielman making the play. Gordon number seven, Spielman 36. Bosco, as you look at the total yards in the game, Bosco is now three out of his last eight for a total of 20 yards. The one thing about great passers is they don't let that bother them. They can throw five interceptions, but they'll come right back and keep on throwing, and that's what we look for Bosco to do in this game. Norberg at the top of the screen, the handoff going to Tui Peloto. The sophomore from San Mateo, California. Pepper Johnson and Chris Spielman are there. The fellows in the middle, 98, 36. And the stop made at the 39-yard line, where it'll be second down and about three. Clock running with 5.50 left to play in the first half. Three to nothing, Ohio State. 47-yard Spangler field goal, the only scoring in this game. go to the far side. Nice catch by Hamuli. 
He was the leading rusher for the last two seasons. An all-stater in Hawaii. Gordon, number seven, the rover, had the coverage. Now, here's 33. This time, Kolick is putting pressure on. He's a linebacker. He's not accustomed to playing down in there. He's taking up two people, even though he can get knocked down. They're trying now. They're really trying to mix up that defense. One time, put pressure on him. One time, drop those eight or nine people deep. They're just really trying to keep, keep BYU off guard with this offensive powerhouse that they have passing. Ohio State has called a timeout. Hey, Mooley has caught four passes for 22 yards here in the first half. Oh, we've got timeout. 5.36 remaining in the first half. Buckeyes three, Cougars nothing. The 1985 Florida Citrus Bowl. Three nothing Ohio State. Bosco's lowest passing yardage this season was 151 yards versus the University of Texas El Paso upset them. He's 7 to 13 for 34 yards today. Bosco throws, and it is complete. That's Bellini at the 23-yard line. Steve Hill, who is now playing for Sonny Gordon at the rover position. Hill number 11, who is normally the nickel back. They went right at him. Now, this is a coverage by the Smurfs. They call them back there because they're all under 5'10". You can see Bellini just curl up. That's what you want to do when it's a zone defense, a drop zone. And we talked about the offensive terminology. They pull up. They make sight adjustments. Robbie Bosco reads them, delivers the ball to them. That's what they have to work on, those sight adjustments. On first down, the pass is caught. And down to the six-yard line is David. 26, just a sophomore from Santa Rosa, California. Rogan and Camaro were over there, but he made a good move. It wasn't a good pass, but great concentration by David Miles. 26, come down with the ball, get up field. That was a great catch. Now, you'll see the ball really is floating. See the trajectory of the ball? Great concentration by Miles, comes down on his feet. A big, big play for this BYU offense. Pickup of 17. First and goal to go, Cougars at the six. he might be trying to go to Bellini number 11. Bellini just couldn't get to the football. Bosco might have been throwing it away under the circumstances. Absolutely, Jay. That's just what he did on that play. He brought Bellini in motion, and when you get a man in motion, you many times get him in single coverage. That's what they're trying to do. The mismatch, get Bellini, run him in motion so that he's single coverage because he can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. He is a great, gifted wide receiver. Bellini is a zoology major, number 11. You saw him there just a moment ago. He has a pet boa constrictor. That's an interesting <laughs> sidelight. Bosco, penalty marker down. Bosco throws. Intercepted. And we'll have to wait and see. The interception by Greg Rogan, the sophomore from Urbana, Ohio. But let's see what the penalty is. It appears the penalty will be against Ohio State. That's against Ohio State. Probably the biggest play in the game right here. Now watch Bosco. Now watch Bosco. He's dropping back. He doesn't have pocket protection. As he drops back, he feels the pressure from his left. He's got to scramble up. Now watch this right here. You'll see ground action. Here's where he's throwing across the grain. Look at that interception by Rogue. Just stepped right in front of the receiver. This man. Four years old, born in Pittsburgh, grew up in Cumberland, Maryland, and he is a hot coach right now. He didn't like that call at all. I wouldn't want to be the player that did that, Jake. Second down, goal to go at the three.
pure justice. This is it. Sick of him. Down on the, on the goal line. Fails to con control the ball. Look at Rogan. Just came up with that big interception. Now gets that big fumble. Oh, boy. What a big play. Ohio State will have it at their 20 when we come back. Ohio State bench. Earl Bruce in the middle. <laughs> Earl didn't want to get too excited again. He'd already... <laughs> he didn't want to be disappointed again, I guess, but what a big turnaround. Sikahema, four carries for 15 yards. He has fumbled twice, both occasions, very costly. First down, Ohio State from the 20-yard line. That's George Cooper getting a couple. Ken Smith, the nose man. 65 on the stop. We've got four minutes and 25 seconds to go in this first half. A 47-yard field goal by Spangler of Ohio State, the only scoring. And the Cougars missing a couple of golden opportunities. One certainly when it appeared they had the touchdown. And they missed the field goal opportunity when Sikahema fumbled down inside the 20-yard right. line. So that sure was a big factor. We really thought that he would have an outstanding day. He's not had it so far. Sato's throwing and a tremendous job by Jason Buck. Buck number 99 from St. Anthony, Idaho, leading sack man for LaBelle Edwards Cougars with 11 and a half. He was in to make the play, the crusher. Now, what you don't want to do as a defensive lineman is get faked out by this bootleg out here. Jason Buck has great speed. He really puts the pressure on Corsadas and throws it incomplete. A very good play by Jason Buck. Sados, who is a gourmet cook in his spare time, going to put it up. And a poor pass. He had a man open, Chris Carter. The pass was underthrown. Jeff Wilcox, number 14, in the secondary on the coverage. A junior from Midvale, Utah, but the pass poorly thrown. It was poorly thrown. He never really got set back there when he threw it. Consequently, he threw it into the dirt in front of Carter. But you have to lead someone with Carter. You have to let him utilize that great speed when he's in the secondary. He was wide open on that play. If he had gotten it to him, that would have been a big gainer for Ohio State. Tupa, again, will do the punting for the Buckeyes. And by Sikahema, back to receive it. Looking up into the sun, Sikahema at the 31. And going the wrong way. Sikahema run out of bounds by Derek Eisenman, number 61. Coming up next on NBC, the journey to Super Bowl 20 begins. AFC Eastern Division rivals squaring off the Patriots and the Jets live from Giant Stadium. It follows this action, and Bob Costas will be along too. So stay with us on NBC Sports. Well, the ball's at the 27-yard line for the Cougars. They have three and a half minutes with which to operate in this first half, down three to nothing. That's Norberg coming in motion, number 85. Trying to set up a little screen. Hey, Mooley got the football, but Chris Spielman makes an outstanding play. David, as you used to say, when you were playing, he stayed at home. He certainly did stay at home, but watch Kolick, too, Jay. Kolick's playing nose tackle. Now, this is a slip screen, but Kolick really disrupts the screen. He gets great pressure on Bosco and just dumps him back at the end, so Bosco falls down. As you said, Spielman stayed at home, played the screen, and they picked up about a minus three or four yards on the play. Let's make it second down and 14. Bosco over the middle. Like a catchable ball for Mark Bellini. Thrown maybe just a little bit behind him, but he had a shot at it. Well, that's what tests the real great receivers. And I'll say this Bellini is a great receiver, great fluid motion, but when he makes this cut inside, you're cutting across the coverage. But this is a ball he should have come down with. He should have made this reception. It's a little bit behind him, but he just didn't concentrate on it all the way in. Cougar fans will remember he made that big catch late in the first half against Hawaii. Third down and 14. Bosco rolling, looking, and throwing complete. Bellini, first 
down at the 45-yard line. William White, number 37, had the coverage, 22-yard pickup. He had one foot in bounds. And what a great throw by Bosco to come back to Bellini in this situation. He's just missed a big catch. Why not come back? Now, watch the tail end of this. He just about gets his head taken off here. There goes his helmet. Ouch, that really hurt. Now watch, he's going to make a comeback. This reminds me of the Oakland Raiders. You start working back to the ball. He catches the ball. He's got one foot in bound. Now watch the tail end. Boom, there goes the hat off. Good concentration on that on his part. Bellini was one of only two freshmen in BYU history to make the team as a walk-on. Hey, Mooley, up to the 40-yard line. Terry White, number 12 the stop and the Cougars trying to get something going before halftime 15 yard pickup and they talk about Hamuli being one of the first people that could play professional football he's a compact player at five foot ten about 220 pounds they're saying with his speed and size he could be the first Tongan player to play professional football he's got all the tools to do it Jay we've got Lance Lindley in there now at tight end number 90 his dad used to be an assistant at BYU. He's from Smithfield, Utah. Handoff going to Tui Peloto. And he is just short of the first down as Pepper Johnson made the play for Ohio State at about the 32-yard line. Clock shows a minute and 55 to go in this first half. Trevor Molini back in now at tight end for Lindley. Scott Norberg into the slot on the left side. Miles also in the game, number 26. They come back against the grain with Tui Peloto. And he has the first down at the 28-yard line. Stopped there by William White, number 37, the left corner. And BYU has totally gone away from their offensive game plan. They realize that they're not going to be able to pass. They're going to make those halftime adjustments. They've got under two minutes as we click off towards halftime. They'll go into halftime, make those adjustments. But right now, they don't want to make a mistake. They would like to at least get a field goal out of this situation. Tui Peloto has 26 yards on four carries. Bosco! No, there's the flag. I was about to say I was surprised that he's not charged there for grounding that ball. And that's what he's going to be charged with on the late flag. We've got a field level look as Bosco was in trouble. Pepper Johnson and John Sullivan doing a job. Great pressure up the middle by Pepper Johnson, but this call really, now there he's in the grass. He throws the ball out here, but I wish you could see the B at the sideline. Look at all the Ohio State people. Hey, he grounded the ball. He grounded the ball. And the referee threw the flag as you indicated. Penalty will back it up to the 47-yard line of the Cougars. And that's an interesting call because it happens at the point the illegal that he grounded the ball. Blue, lost the down five yards from the spot of the pass. Mike Stay Sullivan, down. number 67, is in the game with his brother John now as Mike Sullivan replaces Kolick. Loss of 24 on this play. We've got timeout with 1.14. Three to nothing, Ohio State. Just a moment ago, that was BYU's first penalty of the game. It scored a 24-yard penalty on the incomplete and uh, an incomplete pass, of course. Bosco thinking about going long, but nothing there for him except Bellini, who steps out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And Greg Rogan, again, the corner man, 29, had the coverage. Bosco and the Cougars have a minute and six seconds left to play first half. And look at the shoulder pad on, on Bosco. You'll see the green grass because he's been dumped several times. He's got grass all over his left arm there. He's been down in the dirt. He's been totally disrupted, but they're still in this ball game. Bellini to the far side, Miles to the near side. Third down. Bosco rolling, looking back the other way. This 
start to roll out to his left. The entire offensive line goes out. They roll out to the left. And we'll see it when we come back, but he throws all the way across the field for a touchdown to David Miles. Gary Webster will attempt the point after. It is up. It is good. And the Cougars get on the board. 52 seconds remaining first half. Here it is. Now there's the pocket. He rolls way out. Look at all the offensive linemen here. Now he sets, plants, waits for Miles, and throws all the way across the field. Real high pass to let Miles run underneath it. And David Miles really knows what to do with it. He dives into the end zone just inside the pontoon. It looked as if he went out of bounds on about the one yard line. Now there's the roll, Jay, all the way back across the field. You'll see Miles, 26, just flashing your picture. Now watch Bosco. He sees him, plants, and unloads the bomb. Miles looks like a center fielder going for this one. Miles had only caught eight passes during the season. Today he's caught two for 56 yards and a touchdown. And Bosco is now 13 of 22, 134 yards and the score. And Jay, I'll tell you this, he was out of bounds on the one yard line. I don't want to, I don't want to. Our cameramen are unbelievable. They picked that up. I thought he went out of bounds. And in fact, he did go out of bounds. Now watch the tail end of this. You watch his right foot. I thought he stepped on the white. Now watch his right foot all the way. Now watch right and next step jay how about right there that's out of bounds eight plays 73 yards it's also a touchdown oh, thank you big guy <laughs> 39 <laughs> yard pass bosco to miles 52 seconds left to go in this first half and byu has the lead how come all the guys always say, hi, Mom? How come they never say, hi, Dad? <laughs> There's Lavelle Edwards. Oh, he's got a little bit less of a frown on his face. I looked at him. I don't think he ever smiles. NCAA <laughs> Coach of the Year last season. It is Cougars won the national championship. His teams led the nation in passing eight times. Earl Bruce, National College Coach of the Year. And the Big Ten Coach of the Year in 79. Ohio State almost won it all that time around. And lost by one point to USC in the Rose Bowl. Did them in. The kick coming down to Workman. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line. That was Ormsby kicking off. The young man from New Zealand. Well, on New Year's Day, the best of the bowls. Boy, what a day we've got for you. Showcasing five of the nation's top six teams at 1.30 Eastern Time, the Fiesta Bowl, matching the Michigan Wolverines against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Then the attention will shift to the granddaddy of the ball, out in Pasadena, Chuck Long, Iowa Hawkeyes, battling the Pac-10 champion UCLA Bruins. And then, following the Rose Bowl, a game that may determine the national championship, of course. Number one ranked Nittany Lions of Penn State. Oklahoma Sooners live from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Join us New Year's Day. Out of the backfield, Vince Workman. Workman took it. Got it up to the 32-yard line before Rob Ladenko made the tackle for the Cougars. Uh, you did say that was my alma mater, the Nittany Lions. I mean, we are well, number say, one in the I didn't say it was your alma mater, but it, <laughs> it certainly is. Penn State in the Orange Bowl. New Year's night. Carsados going long, overthrows Carter. Rodney Thomas, number three, had the coverage back there along with Mark two, Sherman. No, you'll want to stay with us for a wonderful halftime show. Both the bands of Brigham Young and Ohio State will be featured, along with some very special entertainment. 28 seconds left to go in this first half. Carsados, 8 of 18 for 82 yards. gets to the 40-yard line, and penalty markers go down. Leon White, number 41, credited with the tackle there. And we'll see what our referee, Vincent Price, and his crew come up with here. 21 seconds left in the first half. Face mask, second face mask call of the game. Now, you can see it on the tail end here as he's going down. Now, watch his cut back inside. You'll see him. He'll cut back inside. Now, there's the face mask. See the left hand 
number 41 on BYU. But if they can pick up about another 10 to 15 yards, they could be well within the range of Gary Webster because when he kicked that field goal before, he made it by at least 12 to 15 yards. Rich Spangler. Excuse me, I meant to say Rich Spangler. All right, 21 seconds left to go in this first half. Arsato's throwing and complete. That's Chris Carter. He's the key man in the pass offense. Jeff Sprouls had the coverage. They've got 11 seconds left. 18-yard pickup. And Ohio State's going to call timeout. And they talk about Chris Carter and his great speed. He certainly had it on that one. And we'll be back here in Orlando in a moment. Ohio State's Rich Spangler's already kicked a 47-yarder today. He is waiting in the wings for another opportunity. Chris Carter with three receptions for 41 yards sets an Ohio State single-season receptions record. And here on first down, Arsados is rolling. He throws. It is incomplete. The ball was bobbled by Mike Lanise as he was going out of bounds. And they're down to five seconds. And Spangler will get the call right now. Now, all he does on this is just bobble it. It's clean into his hands. He concentrates, but you can see he never gets control of it before he goes out of bounds. This is going to be a 55-yard attempt coming up for Rich Spangler. Spangler has gotten a lot of help from Lou the Toe Groza over the years. Very fast, and it's a very vital part of the nation. It really is. The Ohio State University Buckeye Marching Band on the field here at Orlando Stadium. Directed by John Woods. The assistant is Willie Sullivan and the drum major, Greg Iyer. The Buckeye Marching Band. State, or I should say Ohio State University, of course, in Columbus, Ohio. And we're going to have an opportunity right now to take a look at one of the great schools in the Big Ten Conference. The first duty of the first speaker. <laughs> Teaching. If the measure of a university is the sum of its faculty talents, then consider the Ohio State faculty, more than 4,000 strong. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, don't come to this. Keep this. Up to equivalence, you know. Or actually, it's very pleasant. There's something nice about looking in here. Whether the person is male or female is important. Gentlemen, you want men, you With more than 7,000 courses offered in more than 200 majors, Ohio State faculty members teach in nearly every conceivable academic area. But we strive for even more. To this already outstanding faculty, Ohio State now adds three Ohio eminent scholars, with a fourth to come. An innovative partnership with the state of Ohio brings these world-class researchers and teachers to the university. And Ohio State's $350 million private fundraising campaign includes the creation of more than 80 additional endowed faculty chairs and professorships to attract the finest teachers for our students. Because at The Ohio State University, today's teaching ensures tomorrow's achievement. The preceding message was furnished by the Florida Citrus Sports Association on behalf of The Ohio State University. And here at halftime, the script Ohio and the Ohio State fans loving the show put on by the Buckeye Marching Band. There's been one previous meeting between the Buckeyes and the Cougars. It was Holiday Bowl 5 in 82 in San Diego, and Ohio State won it 47 to 17. Tim Spencer helped Ohio State roll up 329 yards rushing on that occasion. We'll be back with more from the Citrus Bowl, Orlando Stadium, Orlando, Florida. Right Hema and Oates back to receive. Sikahema coming over, and he's coming out. poor decision is prompted by his poor first half. He was upset at himself. He's a very articulate young man. 
He obviously, you can see him coming over here and taking the ball away, misjudging it. Now, here's where he makes his, his poor decision, as you said, to come out. You don't want to come out. Look at the coverage. They were inside the five-yard line when he started to come out. A poor decision on Vysik and Hemma's point. And John Sullivan, number 57, who started the day at the outside linebacker spot, made the tackle. Bosco on first down. Over the middle, that is Molini, the tight end. Trevor Molini out to the 14-yard line. And Byron Lee, the outside linebacker, making the stop. Bosco, number six, starting at quarterback. With a Mully, 35. To a Peloto, number 46. Robbie Bosco holds the NCAA record for pass attempts and completions. That's a lot of passes, Jay. Had a lot of good quarterbacks out there oh, at BYU, boy. too. Mike Young, whose brother Steve, of course, played at BYU, spotting the Cougars for us this afternoon. Whistle on second down. Doing the spotting for Ohio State, our old friend Steve Snap, the assistant sports information director for the Big Ten Club, the Buckeyes. Illegal procedure against the Cougars. In this second half, Molini could really play an important part in this offense because they're dropping that zone back. He's the tight end coming off the line. He's got great speed, a sprinter speed, highly sought after. He's got 63 catches. If he can catch that ball and they have to single cover him when you drop that deep zone, he could play a big part in the second half and be a major part of this BYU offense. Second down and 10. As you look at Robbie Bosco, that's Bellini at the top of the screen. Sikahema is back in the lineup. Intercepted over the middle. Coming back with it is Kulik. Touchdown, Ohio State! This big a part. He's been a nose man. He's been a linebacker. He's intercepted passes. He just ran for a touchdown. What a position he has played today. Spangler makes the point after. The turnover puts Ohio State in the lead. 10 to 7. Greatest thrill you can have as a linebacker is to play nose man. Drop back into pass coverage. Now that was that was goalie. Now look, he never sees him. Bosco never saw. Kolick drop off the line for that interception. Last season, Kolick returned a pass interception. He came away with one of Chuck Long's passes and scored against Iowa. Now he gets the big turnaround for the Buckeyes against BYU. And we talked about the confusion that Ohio State has done. That playing nose man, dropping back into coverage, sometimes rushing. Kolick has been very, very instrumental in this turnabout. 10 to 7, Ohio State. As you saw, the third turnover for the Cougars. 13.52 left, third quarter. Buckeyes leading at 10 to 7. Spangler ready to kick off. Sikahema and Oates back to receive. Sikahema's not coming out. Let's go sideline with Tom Hammond. Jay, before the interception, we saw the game plan for the second half begin to unfold for BYU. They had planned to go with the shorter stuff to complete underneath the coverage and perhaps get some good gainers that way. And Bosco executed on the first couple of downs, but as Dave said, he never saw Kolick on the interception. Kolick dropped back into coverage. Bosco put it right in his midsection. But BYU does plan to go with the shorter passes to perhaps open up the deep stuff later in the half. All right, some insight from Tom Hammond, who played collegiately at LSU. Big Dave Rowe alongside who played at Penn State later in the pros. Hope you're enjoying their thoughts this afternoon on this Citrus Bowl game. Oh, out of nowhere. Bosco is hit by Byron Lee, the outside linebacker. He's number 82.
two out of Eastmore High School in Columbus, Ohio. And Bosco never saw Lee coming from his strong hand. He'll come from the top of your screen, from the top right. Now watch Bosco looking away. There's a shot. Boy, jerks his head back. Wow, did Bosco take a shot on that ball by number 82, Byron Lee. 13-18, left to go in the third quarter. Second down, 20. Whistle. Play is stopped by referee Vincent Price and his crew. Too much time, delay a game. You called it. Delay a game, Jay. But they have really, Ohio State has just totally befuddled BYU today. They've stunned it. They've blitzed. They've dropped back. They have really kept Bobby Bosco. Lives just in just white guard all day. Lavelle Edwards joined Hal Mitchell's staff at BYU way back in 62, and he succeeded Tommy Hutzpeth as the head coach there in 72. Does the one official say it's complete? He's holding a spot on the sideline, I He's thought. He's holding a spot. Well, now he backs off. The one official, the side judge, almost gave an indication that it was complete. Let's look at it here. There's the pass to the sideline. Now he has to come down with one foot in. No oh, way. it wasn't even close. No. It was knocked away. He, he must have just been though. marking the spot for some reason or other over there. All right, it is third down. and the Buckeyes are fired up and so are their fans. Their fans are rising up. Spielman, Spielman just meets Tui Peloto in the hole and hello, how are you? Bam, he knocked him down to the ground. Kevin Towell standing back in the end zone. Mike Lanise set to receive the punt. And Ohio State's got everybody up on the line. He gets the kick away. Angled to this side see where they're spotted. They're going to spot it at about the 45-yard line. We'll be back with four right after Ohio State at the BYU 44 after the 35-yard punt. The handoff going to George Cooper. And Coop cracks inside the 40-yard line. Steve Sanders, the sophomore from Orange, California, has played very well for the Cougars this season. Number 59 making the stop. You see Vince Workman come into the game, the freshman from Dublin, Ohio. These two coaches, Lavelle Edwards and Earl Bruce, played a little golf here earlier in the week with Arnold Palmer over at Bay Hill. We'll be back there later in 1986 for the Bay Hill Classic, always a big event on NBC. And off to Workman. And he's hit by Jason Buck, number 99, as he gets near the 37-yard line. Clock running with 11 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter as the Buckeyes got the turnover in the opening minute of the third quarter as Kolick took it in from nine yards out on an interception and they lead it 10 to 7. Tarsados, nine out of 20 for 99 yards. On third down and three. The pitch back coming to Wildridge. Wildridge has got the first down and is all the way to the 26-yard line before Rob Ledenko bangs him out of bounds. Wildridge had nine touchdowns this season. Now this play is supposed to be made by Mark Sherman, number five. He has got the pitch man. Now you'll see he dives to bring him, doesn't hold on. There's Woolridge keeps the good speed, keeps those speed inbounds, tippy toeing down the sideline, picks up a big yardage gain for him. 11 yards on the play, first down. Woolridge with 43 yards this afternoon. Ross Schneiderman and his crew handling our statistics here in Orlando. 
for Cooper. The ball comes out, and it's going to belong to BYU. Leon White, number 41, came up with it. And when you guess right and you hit that running back in the hole, he doesn't have time to concentrate on the ball. He just got, Cooper just got jammed in the hole. Someone ripped the ball out. It came free. And Leon White comes up with a big fumble recovery. This is the first turnover of the afternoon for Ohio State. And BYU will have it when we come back to Orlando. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Tom Hammond's on the sidelines. Dave Rowe and Jay Randolph with you. The 40th Citrus Bowl. Big happy birthday event for the city of Orlando and the folks in Central Florida as BYU and Ohio State go at it. Bosco gets it batted down and it is on the ground, an incomplete pass. It was almost picked off. They put real good pressure as this Ohio State club on Robbie Bosco here this afternoon. That is the exact key. They are getting up in Robbie Bosco's face. When those linemen, we all talked about the size of the linemen here. When they put those arms up, it's like throwing through the woods. There's a lot of trees sticking up in your face. pressure they're collapsing the pocket around him look he has to bring it back down bring it back down again now there he gets hit Cole it comes from nowhere he's playing Robbie Bosco's eyes picks up the interception and they're down in scoring territory again and they fumble and it goes right back to BYU it was fumbled by Vince Workman number 42 and recovered by Whittingham 53 and they turn it right back and you talk about emotion. You think these two teams aren't playing. They're playing their hearts out today. People talked about this game not being important because Ohio State didn't go to the Rose Bowl and because BYU lost a couple games. But watch the intenseness and the hitting. Now he's got the ball put away. He bangs in the back of his own person. There comes the ball out. Just a good hit by the defender. Rips the ball out. We got BYU going the other way. Shaken up on the last play. He coughed up the football. He certainly did as he runs into the back of his offensive guard. He loses sight of himself. And really right there, Ledenko puts a hand in, knocks the ball out. BYU's going the other direction. BYU has had a lot of things go their way, both positive and negative, Jay. It's been a roller coaster ride here. To a polo two. Out to about the 19-yard line. Chris Spielman, 36 on the tackle. Dewey Balutu, one of the young men from Tonga, lives in San Mateo, California now. Pickup of about three on the play. Second down and seven. We have 9.15 remaining in the third quarter. There's BYU's last three possessions. A sprained neck is the word that we get on Vince Workman. Over the middle, Hamuli to the 24-yard line. Loke Hemuli, the junior, he had 100 and, well, let's see, 857 yards coming into today's game. In the Holiday Bowl last year, 82 yards on 16 carries. The leading rusher over the last two seasons as they attend there to Workman. A first down at the 25-yard line. Buckeyes lead at 10 to 7, third quarter with 8.45 to play. Well, if anybody has the composure to regroup himself, Robbie Bosco does. He's a great competitor in tight situations. Has a great winning record here at BYU. Looked like somebody moved on the line for BYU. Let's pause five seconds now for station identification 
This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Colorado's News Channel, KCNC TV, Denver. With Tom Hammond and Dave Rowe, Jay Randolph, Orlando Stadium, Citrus Bowl. Dead ball, illegal procedure, the white, still first down. Illegal procedure call against BYU. It'll be first and 15. The Cougar Band entertaining. At the moment, Buckeyes leading 10 to 7. It has been a wild and woolly third quarter up to now. Bosco standing in, in trouble, gets out of there, throws, incomplete. Sikahema was in the zone. Some of the Ohio State folks looking for another grounding call. They're not going to get it. Bosco did a real good job of scrambling out of there. And they really could have had a, a grounding call because I thought he grounded it also. But watch him. B Bosco is so used to staying in that pocket. Now he starts to get pressure. You can see Ohio State putting a pressure on. Now he has to run outside. There's pressure from the outside. Now tell me this isn't grounding. Look here. He's on his way down. Now watch. Boom. There's nobody out there. <laughs> Jay, I look oh, like we don't grounding have it in the graphs call in college football. <laughs> Remember that. That's right. <laughs> Bellini going in motion to the far sideline. Second down. This is Tui Poloto, and he's across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Byron Lee, number 82, the outside linebacker, made the stop. The BYU cheerleaders. 7.50 to play in the third quarter. Third down and 10 coming up. Jay, I talked about Robbie Bosco and his great record. You know, when he started at quarterback, he has 24 wins, two losses. So this is a different composure for him to be in at this present time. Bosco rolling to the far sideline, looking downfield. has got a man, Bellini. Bellini can't get it. Oh, they closed at the last minute. Terry White made a brilliant play. White from Cambridge, Ohio, just 5'9". He came from that safety position out of nowhere as Bellini looked like he had him beat. And what Bosco does there is he waves Bellini long. Now Terry White's playing center field. He just reads the pass. He's got a lot of time to get over. Look at that. Just a matter of inches or Bellini. He was so wide open. It's amazing that Terry White must have come 30 yards to cover that play. There's the tip. Just a long incomplete pass. I want to tell you a story about Terry White. We get a chance later on. Here is the punt by Kevin Toll. Lanise lets it roll, and it is inside the 20 at the 21-yard line. Ohio State will take it there with 7.13 left in the third quarter. Fifth Thanks. Wonderful area here, and the people, they've had a great week. Our blip overhead giving you these great shots this afternoon. First down for Ohio State. And that is John Wooldridge. Wooldridge is across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Steve Sanders, 59, on the tackle. And as we talked earlier about that line play, that nose play, watch this play here. Now, 65 is Ken Smith. Now, he's playing along the line well, but he's got to be able to stop, plant, and come back. What happens, Mags takes him past the play, allows the running back to cut up for big yardage. Mags has got to, he really won that one over Ken Smith, number 65. Mags, the junior, doing a heck of a job playing with a bad back, all Big Ten. That's Woolridge again as Ohio State tries to control the football. He bangs for the first down near the 33-yard line. Number 77, Sean Knight, a junior from Sparks, Nevada, making the stop. Second half possessions for Ohio State. Two big fumbles. Boy, that really did hurt BYU in the second half. They have not been able to sustain a drive all day long. And it's a compliment to the Ohio State defense. They have really reacted well to the ball. Tarsados throwing over the middle, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Mark Sherman. Sherman thought that he had had it. Sherman, who is from Quincy, Florida, lives now out in Oxnard, California, number five. 
came to BYU from Ventura College. And the important thing is whether he got his hands underneath. No, no he didn't. It Good bounced call. just in front of him. But every defensive back will get up and wave that ball, say, yeah, I caught it, I caught it, just in case they missed it. John Hutchison, the senior from Atwater, Ohio, is in the game now. Number 81, a tight end. There's Mark Sherman. That was the first time that Ohio State has thrown a pass in the second half. Here goes Lanise in motion to the far side. Woldridge to the 38. Ludenko, number nine, and Sanders, 59, on the tackle. I mentioned Lanise going in motion on that play. He is a Rhodes Scholar and will be going to England for further studies out of Mayfield, Ohio. Lanise majoring in English and political science. One of a select group of just 32 students, Rhodes Scholars. It's great to see the student athlete playing in the big games and playing so well in other areas, too. Sato's throws, it is Cooper at the 40, 45. Cooper's all the way down to the BYU 48-yard line. It was Whittingham 53 and Sherman number five who finally made the tackle. And Corsados never saw that completion. He just threw the ball to an area. He was getting dumped on his back. Now watch the tail end of this. You'll see Corsados looking off. Now here's the dump pass. Here comes the pressure. He never sees the complete. He's dumped Cooper. Now once he gets up ahead of steam, he is a compact, speedy player. Picks up 14 yards, a big first down. And that's Woolridge to the 45-yard line. Four minutes and 55 seconds to play in the third quarter, and Ohio State leading 10 to 7. That stop made by Sanders again. He's done a splendid job today. Sanders had uh, Lad Ukeo, the junior from Pearl City, Hawaii, has got that pinched nerve and hasn't been able to go, and Sanders has filled in very nicely for him. to Lanise as Carsados really took a shot. It was amazing he got that pass away. Sprouls 25 and Govea 34 on the tackle. Now watch Govea from the back side. Carsados never sees him. He just dumps him. Now if he had been able to get over in the middle of his back one-tenth of a second faster, that would have been a knockdown pass. But he completes it for about a one-yard gain, so it brings up a big third down and about three. Garsados and Lanise hooked up for the longest Ohio State pass play of the season. A 75-yarder. Of course, as I mentioned, in the fall, he'll be studying as a Rhodes Scholar over in England. Lanise. Garsados rushed again. Shovel it to Cooper. And Cooper has a first down. Pressure on Carsados, but he is hanging tough. Whittingham, 53 on the tackle. Well, Carsados said, I'm just a pup. I've got next year to prove myself. But he's proving himself here. Look at Govey. Look at the pressure he's put on him. He just dumps it to Cooper. Cooper tipped the ball about twice, came down, made a splendid run down inside the 40-yard line, down about the 38-yard line. Picked up a big first down again. Cooper now has five catches for 47 yards. Garsados hands it off to Woolridge, and he's down to the 33-yard line. That Buckeye offensive line of Mags and Gilmore, and Ulenek and Graves and Cotterman doing quite a job right now. Whittingham 53 again there to make the tackle for the Cougars. And at this situation, it's really interesting, the different philosophies. Ohio State, a great running team, of course, without Keith Byers today. BYU, an explosive offense. But right now, it's Ohio State grinding the ball out, keeping it on the ground, passing when they have to, but picking up those big, important first downs to keep a drive alive. Lanise goes to the far sideline. Second man through is Woolridge. Woolridge, another first down at the 25, and they're banging them out now. 
Ludenko, number nine on the stop. That was the 11th, or check it, the 10th play of this drive. And it's really the first sustained drive by either offense. Both offenses have sputtered, and it's a compliment to both defenses. But right now, that big offensive line of Ohio State is blowing into that BYU team, and they've got a little bit of a weight advantage. There's an interested partner. I'll tell you, I really feel sorry for him today. I know what he, he wanted to do, but they are really controlling the line of scrimmage. He fires out of the game, injured early on, that foot of his. Waldridge maybe got a yard to the 25, wrapped up there by Govea, 34, and David Futrell, who's now playing the nose man spot, Futrell, number 75. And Govea, at 6'1", 228 pounds, is really a model linebacker. He has got great range, great speed. He accelerates along the line of scrimmage, has great lateral pursuit, and he's the top-rated defensive player that they have on this BYU team. The Cougars have had a quiet confidence about their defense this season, but right now Ohio State's really testing it. Carsados, the out pass complete at the 20-yard line to Lanise. Lanise, 41 catches last year, five touchdowns this season on 27 catches coming into today's game. The Rhodes Scholar, brilliant young man, very dapper dresser, too. <laughs> I was really amazed as we talked to the players how articulate oh, these yes. players are. I mean, it's a real compliment to both these universities. These are very, very well representative of their particular schools. Been a splendid week for us, Dave, to get a chance to meet these fine young people. Complete down to the 13-yard line, Ed Taggart. Taggart, the junior from Akron. He had 30 catches this year and three touchdowns. The big tight end, number 80. The stop was made by Leon White, 41. And there are some Taggart fans. Love our man Taggart. Love NBC and our man Taggart. Timeout, Brigham Young University with 50 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. The only score of this period, Kolick picking off a Bosco pass and romping in for nine yards out for the touchdown. The Cougars, an 11 and two record coming into this game. They lost a toughie to UCLA 27-24 and then were upset by UTEP 23 to 16 when they were held to 146 yards passing. Remember New Year's Day, the best of the bowls on NBC. The Fiesta will kick it off. 1.30 Eastern time, the Wolverines and the Cornhuskers. And then the attention will shift out to Pasadena, California. The Rose Bowl with Chuck Long and third-ranked Iowa, the Hawkeyes. And they battle the Pac-10 champion UCLA Bruins. Following the Rose Bowl, primetime action to determine the national championship. The Nittany Lions of Penn State, Dave School, ranked number one, coached by Joe Paterno, take on second-ranked Oklahoma, the Sooners from down in Norman. The Orange Bowl with all its pageantry, and what a great game. That's all coming up for you, New Year's Day on NBC. Boy, what a day it's going to be. I'm going to just sack in and be ready for that one. That's the day I tell my wife, don't bother me, because <laughs> I just want to watch all those games. I think every team that's ranked of any significance is in that, in that series, those three bowls. 13 plays in this drive, 66 yards. It's taken better than 6 minutes and 20 seconds. Woolridge. Woolridge inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. Terry Whittingham, who's had an outstanding game for the Cougars, number 53, and David Futrell, number 75, make the stop. And I'd like to tell you a story about Kerry Whittington, Whittingham, I should say, number 53. I, I can think back. I played with his dad. Now, that's when you think you're getting old. <laughs> Woolridge has had himself a day, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Look at that. BYU, 70 yards. Woolridge has had 80. He has 80 by himself. Seconds left in the third quarter. Carsados throwing. Oh, he had his man and threw poorly. He had Ed Taggart wide open and threw a poor pass. Got 
little anxious. Well, it's a double threat. Karsadis has both the options to fake here. Now, you'll see him fake, trying to draw the linebackers. He rolls out here. Now, he has the option whether to run or pass. He sees Taggart. He just throws past the outstretched hands. It's called a tight end delay. The tight end, as he comes off the line of scrimmage, he sneaks across the field. Really, <laughs> Karsadis really should have hit Taggart. He was wide open. Arsados for two years understudied Mike Tomzak. He lost some weight. He's more mobile now. Third down and banging inside the five is Wayne Cooper. That's the end of the third quarter. The Buckeyes 10, the Cougars 7. We'll have we start the fourth quarter in the 40th Citrus Bowl. Fourth and one for Ohio State, just inside the five, and they're going to go for it. Well, I would go for it, too, because the field goal will only put you up six points. And with this explosive BYU team, they can score any time. But Ohio State's had great success on the run. That's Woolridge. And we'll wait and see. Looked like he might have gotten enough for the first down. Steve Sanders again, 59, with Sean Knight, 77 leading the charge for the Cougars. And the Cougars think they've stopped them short. I'm sure we'll get a measurement for Earl Bruce's club as he paces the sidelines. Well, the two linebackers just met him right in the hole and stuck him. Once he was hit, he didn't fall forward. They may, in fact, have stopped him. Here is the measurement. was a great fill by the linebackers. You see 53 Winningham going in there. There's the stop right on the line of scrimmage. You see 59 in there fighting, not allowing him to fall forward. If he falls forward six inches, he's got the first down. They stop him. This could be a big emotional turn for BYU. Marvelous coverage there by Richard Klein and our crew bringing you the sights and sounds of the Citrus Bowl. They went 17 plays, 75 yards. It took seven minutes and 19 seconds, but they came up empty. And BYU down by three. Ready to move. Bosco in the end zone. All kinds of time. Bosco completing it out to Molini. Molini the tight end at the 18-yard line. And back downfield. One of the Cougars shake it up. Getting up slowly, John Borgia, big, strong sophomore from Glenwood, Illinois. Now watch the time that Bosco has back here. He fakes in the line, his play action. Now he even has time to wave him. Okay, you go over there. All of a sudden, he sees Molini coming out of here. Now that's not really a good pass because he lofted it. Had he been able to drill it in there, Molini, with his sprinter speed, may have picked up another 10 or 15 yards. But that's what they have to do, that short passing game to set up the long passing game. They did get out of the hole. First down. This one is winged out and dropped. Molini couldn't hold on out at the 28-yard line. As you're looking, Robbie Bosco, who has a 66.1% completion average coming into today's game on the season, the Holiday Bowl MVP from a year ago, third in the Heisman Trophy voting. He was redshirted back in 82. Bosco majoring in communication, 17 of 32, 156 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. That's Hamuli for the first down. Locke Hamuli. He was run out of bounds over there by Sonny Gordon. 16-yard pickup. And that's a good indication of this sophistication in the BYU passing attack, which we talked about earlier. These runners as, and wide receivers, as they go out, they make sight adjustments. If they see a zone coverage, they'll pull up. Now, they're going to do an out pattern, which means they turn out towards the sideline, but if they see zone coverage, they can pull up shorter. And Bosco is starting to read the defense of the Ohio State team much better this, this quarter. Bosco running out of there, out to the 36-yard line. He looked like he might have been going to the tight end, Lance Lindley, who's now in there replacing Molini. The 
Buckeyes have Derek Eisenman, an outstanding freshman from Fremont, Ohio, number 61, at an outside linebacker spot now. He played very well against Michigan. 13 and a half minutes to play. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. A Mooley with the football penalty marker down. A Mooley to the 37 yard line. Pepper Johnson on the tackle, number 98, along with number 55, Ray Holloman, a junior from Holland, Michigan, is in the game now. And they call that an offside on Ohio State. So the play doesn't uh, doesn't go for a two yard gain. It goes for a five yard gain and they get the play over. So a big penalty. Offside, red, second down. BYU has brought the football from deep in their own end out to the 41 yard line. Talking it over on the sidelines. Scott and Norbert to the near side, Molini to the far side. Bosco setting up the screen. Sikahema out of bounds at the 40. And did you see Chris Spielman that way, that time come all the way across the field? He knew it. He saw the screen set up, saw the drop by Bosco, and he came flying across from his position all the way across the field to make that tackle. Chris Spielman, 133 tackles, number one tackler on this team. And that was with missing a uh, game or two, if I'm not mistaken, an NEA All-American. At Washington High School in the tradition rich football city of Massillon, Ohio. Bosco scrambles and hits Bellini. Bellini has a first down at the 41 yard line. Mark Bellini. California. I talked with him yesterday at practice. He said, you know, I didn't even get offered a scholarship. <laughs> he just walked on, decided he wanted to play football. And wow, you just don't do that very often to come up and, and play major college football as a walk-on. First down for the Cougars. Ohio State leading, but BYU marching. Dewey below two. To the 36-yard line, William White, number 37, on the tackle. When you have a six-and-a-half-yard average per carry, I'd go to that young fellow a lot more. He is He's run the ball 90, 90 times this year, I think. No, 58 times, I should say. But he's got a great average. Oh, excuse me, it is 90 times for six-and-a-half-yard average. See Gary Webster loosening up on the sidelines. He does the field goal kicking. Sikahema's back in there to replace Tui below two. Bosco goes down at the 46-yard line. Pepper Johnson leading the way for the Buckeyes of Earl Bruce. And there, there's, there's the difference in coverage. They, that time they decided they were going to blitz. They have confused them all day. You'll see Pepper Johnson, number 98, come into your screen right in the center. Bosco has no place to step up. Down he goes, a big five or six-yard loss. It really hurts BYU in this situation. Had Bosco had a little bit more time, he might have been able to pick up Bellini coming across the field. He was wide open. Third down and 13 at the 41. Bellini makes the catch. Mark Bellini went high to the air and made the catch in front of Sonny Gordon. It's a first down. just distraught over this play but every time something seems to go good for BYU it doesn't and you can see this catch by Bellini right almost as if you're catching it at home it's just thrown right to you third down it'll bring up third down and 24 Ohio State held Chuck Long to 169 yards passing four interceptions 
earlier this year. Bosco today is 20 of 35, 190 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. See Chuck Long and his Iowa bunch on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl right here on NBC. should say David Miles downfield. You remember he caught the touchdown pass earlier in this game for BYU. Rogan had the coverage down there with Gordon and BYU will have to punt. And that is just a frustration pass. That's what that was. I'm just going to force it in there. Great coverage by Ohio State. They had three men back that time. Not a chance that that ball would be completed. And Bosco is getting more and more frustrated as the game goes on punt to the far sideline inside the 15 now inside the 10 down to the nine yard line and Ohio State will start from there 10 27 remaining in the game Ohio State leads this electronic timer will show how fast you can relieve sore throat pain my sore throat feels very red and, and hot will you try chloroseptic sure now watch the timer Mm. Oh, that's nice. That works really good. With doctor-recommended chloroseptic, relief is just seconds away. Come along. We're going to try to find a banker. To be called a banker, you know, you've had to have had very special training in the management of people's money. 51-yard punt a moment ago. Ohio State starting from its own eight-yard line. Carsados the quarterback with Cooper and Woolridge. Carsados on first down, throwing, and the catch is made. and bounds. They talk about Chris Carter's uh, speed. That was an unbelievable catch. What hands? One hand, tiptoes on the sideline. They say he's got great speed, but he really showed what his hands were on that play. 16-yard pickup. Of course, he set a single-season Ohio State record here today for catches. Second man through is Wildridge. He gets a couple. One more look at that catch. It deserves it, doesn't it? Now watch this one hand. It's his, it's his left hand. Now, I don't know if he really came with his feet down in bounds. There's the left hand. He's got the ball. Yeah, I think he's in bounds. He has a 36-inch vertical jump. How well, he that? jumped 36 inches you that bet. time. For those of you, uh, of course, looking forward to NFL 85 with Bob Costas, that'll be coming up as soon as this action is concluded. Here's Carsados, far side complete. Carter again. Carsados and Carter putting on a little passing show right now. Well, they say that Chris Carter, number two, is so fast that he can turn off the lights and get in bed before it gets dark. And they're respecting his speed, a 15-yard gain, and he's connected back-to-back -back with Chris Carter. And Ohio State out of a hole. They're out to their own 41-yard line. Nine minutes and 41 seconds remaining. The Buckeyes lead the Cougars 10-7 to in the 40th Citrus Bowl. Woldridge, penalty marker goes down. Woldridge was hit by Gary Whittingham, the senior from Provo, Utah. He had a broken hand earlier in the year. Boy, he's played well this afternoon. Holding call is indicated. Holding against Ohio State. I know that Fred and Nancy Whittingham are, are watching this game, so I know they're kind of excited. There's a person who's not very excited. But uh, the talk about Kerry Whittingham and his, fa his father was probably one of the most intense linebackers, was a coach here at BYU, now coaches for the Los Angeles Rams. Well, and looking at Byers again, for those of you who may have joined us late, he injured that foot of his, uh, the one that's bothered him all season long. And as Tom Hammond told us, he will Rolling have an operation to put a pin in that situation, to put the pin in the, in the foot. 
and hopefully he'll be able to return to greatness because he certainly has tremendous talent and is a wonderful, wonderful young man. A little delay to Woldridge. Woldridge gets to the 30 four-yard line before Steve Sanders 59 and Jason Buck 99 make the play. Patrell is in there at the nose 75 and we've got Yulima Budasimanu, another tough one for us, who's now at the weak side linebacker. He's a Samoan though. He's not from Tonga. That's one of those Tonga twisters though. <laughs> it is a Tonga twister. <laughs> Second down, 17. Carsados got a man, Lanise. And Lanise doesn't have enough for the first down, but he got to the 45-yard line. The corners, Thomas 3 and Sprouls 25, converging to make the play. And it was a good choice by Carsados on that, not to try to pick up the 17 to 20 yards that he needed for the first down, Pick up about 10, 11 of it on that play. Come back. Now you've got a third down about six. You pick it up, another little short pass, and you've got a first down. They get 12 yards on the play. This big crowd really enjoying themselves. You see the time remaining, eight minutes. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Carsados over the middle, wide open. Woolridge, first down. 45-yard line. Wilcox, 14, made the play for the Cougars. But right now, Carsados and company are doing a very excellent job. Great play selection from the Ohio State side of the field. Short dump passes, a running play to keep them off guard, throw it deep to Chris Carter, come back with another dump pass. They are really have a great game plan right now, and Lavelle Edwards is obviously upset. There's Earl Bruce saying, good job in there. his way up the middle is Cooper. Cooper's down to the 38-yard line. Mark Sherman, the safety number five, makes the tackle. When you're 190 pounds, 189 pounds like Mark Sherman is, and you're coming up and tackling a man of Cooper's size who's 6'2", 240 pounds with great speed. Wow, that hurts. BYU led 7-3 at halftime. The only score since then, a nine-yard touchdown for Kolick of Ohio State on a Bosco interception. Too high this time for Chris Carter. Sherman covering in the zone back there. The quarterback comparisons on the day. But the big thing, of course, Jay, is the interceptions. You see it on the right part of your screen. Two interceptions. They have been crucial interceptions against BYU. Bosco on occasion taking the long route when maybe he should have looked for something a little shorter. Well, he's, he's obviously frustrated. He's obviously out there trying to complete that long pass. He's got to make that adjustment and come underneath for those shorter games. Third down and five. And incomplete. Garsados was pressured. Jeff Sprouls had the coverage over on the far side against Carter. And you talk about pressured. BYU that time sent nine men up the line of scrimmage to rush. They're not a blitzing team. They're not known as a blitzing team, but they ran right down the throat of Corsados. He saw nine of them coming at him that time. And we're going to get... Now, now, wait a minute. They're going to call timeout. I was about to say we're going to get a 56-yard field goal attempt. But right now, we're going to get a timeout. The Buckeyes lead 10-7. to 7. Oh, This is Jay Randolph. Well, they had Spangler on the field. Call timeout. They've decided to go with a punt. Tom Tupa. And downfield by Sikahema, who has broken some long ones this season. He may not get a chance to return this one as they angle it to the near sideline. And let's see where they're going to spot it. At the 13-yard line. That's where BYU will take over. Back with more in just a moment. 
for the Cougars. The Buckeyes lead it 10 to 7. Bosco straight back, batted down, almost picked off. Byron Lee. And also 95. I think it was Daryl Lee, wasn't it? Let's watch here. Number 95, Daryl Lee. Did he get a hand on it? I think see, it was. You can see it's like throwing through the forest. But I'm, let me interject the thought here, Jay. I just don't know whether Robbie Bosco is a completely healthy athlete today. I have never seen him throw as poorly as he has thrown today. Everything he seems as if he's throwing sidearm. He hasn't been sharp. He hasn't thrown his long pass as well. He just doesn't seem to have it today. Pass is complete to Locke Hamuli as the defender fell down on the play. Hamuli was able to come up with a 27-yard reception. And even on this pass, you'll see there's not that great trajectory. Watch how high he has to throw this ball. It's almost as if he's struggling throwing it. Look at that. Look at the trajectory of that ball. That is really high. It gives the defender a lot of time to react back to the play. It's just not delivered sharp and crisp like the Robbie Bosco that I've seen in the past. Well, it may be that his arm is bothering him some. Eight receptions for 68 yards for Hamuli today. Bosco bails out incomplete. Trying to get it to by Sikahema. He was out of bounds when he took it in, and John Sullivan, 57, had the coverage over there. You know, earlier we saw Terry White make a big play in the secondary as you look at Bosco's statistics. Three of the uh, four fellows in the secondary for the Buckeyes were all running backs when they were in high school. And Terry White, young fella, I sat next to at the lunch and was at our table yesterday. Over 3,000 yards in high school at Cambridge, Ohio. Now playing defensive positions here at Ohio State. Tui Peloto and a penalty marker down. And it looked like Ohio State might have been offside. You see the time remaining. 6.05 to go. There's the offside signal. Now, it was an interesting call by Bosco. What he did is teams get in a cadence. It's almost as if you get in a rhythm. The offense comes out and starts on the second count. And everything goes smooth. The defense reacts to it. That time, as Bosco came up the line, he gave him an extra Nine, count. Red, five yards, still second down. What he did is he came up to the line of scrimmage and went, he'd been going on two. He came up, went hut, hut, like that, and drew the defense offside, had a free play. Second down, five yards. That's the easiest five yards Mr. Bosco has picked up all day. Field goal would tie this game. Of course, that wouldn't be the case if Ohio State had kicked the field goal in close when they went for fourth and one at the five-yard line and didn't get it in the third quarter. You can always look back and second guess, but it's bowl time. You let it all hang out, don't you? You bring up brings up a great Dave Rowism. If bips and butts were cherries and nuts, then every day would be Christmas. I thought it was the whole <laughs> world would be squirrels. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to tell you back this afternoon from both teams, we'd expected some bigger plays on offense. Bosco, quick toss. It's complete to Scott Norberg. Scott, who transferred from Nebraska, number 89, a junior from Tempe, Arizona, hit by Sonny Gordon, the Roverman, number seven. And it looks like a first down. It is at the 49-yard line. And now Robbie Bosco is finding those short wide receivers. There comes a receiver into town. Look, do this. That's Miles from the left side. He's number 26. They're telling him, hit those short passes. They're wide open. And he's connected on a couple now. Norberg and Miles are the wide receivers. Sikahema inside the 45-yard line. Sikahema gets to the 43. Ray Holloman, number 55, stalled him at that point for Ohio State. The clock is running as we come to five minutes to play. And Jay, I interjected that thing about his arm maybe, so I'm talking about Robbie Bosco. But I watched him yesterday in practice. He did not throw one pass in practice yesterday. Now, I don't know if that's one of his, his little traits or not, but the day before the game, I was surprised not to see a quarterback throwing at least a three or four practice passes. On second down, Bosco over the middle, complete to Hamuli. And he's got the first down at the 37-yard line. Chris Spielman, the linebacker, 36, makes the play, and they'll move the chains. 
with 4.41 left to go in this game. And we should remind everybody, no overtimes in college action, even at the bowl game level. That's right. We go home if they kick a field goal. We go home 10 to 10. But uh, neither team wants to play for a tie. They want to play to win. Last year, a 10 to 10 tie here. That was Tui Pelotu again. And he is down to the 37-yard line. Larry Kolick, 33 on the tackle. He's been the big hero in the second half. Kolick, 33 with Alfred Spielman, 36. And you see the time remaining as we near four minutes. Well, if, in fact, Ohio State does this win this game, Kolick could run for mayor of Columbus and probably win because he's played an outstanding game on defense. to see how they rule that because his arm was hit by Pepper Johnson who was bearing down on him. <laughs> we talked about Pepper Johnson earlier. Yesterday when we were taking pictures, he wouldn't smile. He said linebackers don't smile. Now watch him creep up into line. He's going to blitz. This is what they've done so effectively. Look at that. Just sideswipes that lineman. Bam! Hits that ball and knocks it right out of Robbie Bosco's hands. Pepper Johnson has played really well today from his line. Now there's the scowl I was talking about. That's a smile on him, Jay. <laughs> Third down and nine. Bosco going long, and it is intercepted, I believe. It is intercepted. Ohio State football, number 37, William White took it away. Just the biggest turnover of the day. Total frustration. Look at the trajectory of the ball. Real high allows the defender to come back. William White, there's both feet inbounds. He only needed one, but he came down with both feet inbounds. Intercepts the ball, and as you said, Jay, probably the biggest turnover of the day. Woolridge carrying for Ohio State. Stop made by Whittingham, number 53. A day that has been rough going for Robbie Bosco. One on the play. There are the turnovers. Second and nine. Like to offer our thanks to Brigham Young University for their assistance today and all week to Athletic Director Glenn Tuckett, the Sports Information Director Dave Schultes, Head Coach Laval Edwards and his entire staff. Thanks to all the gang from BYU. That's Woolridge getting to the 27-yard line. He was met there by Sprouls and Sanders. Also, our thanks, of course, to the folks of Ohio State. Athletic Director Rick Bay, the Sports Information Director Marv Holman, to Earl Bruce and his coaching staff. Third down and four coming. Two minutes and 30 seconds right now left in this game. Arsato's throwing. With a tremendous effort, the Rhodes Scholar Mike Lanise. Sanders made the stop number 59. Lanise did a very important job. He kept the movement going for Ohio State. A completed pass inbounds. You don't have a two-minute warning in college football. It's a, an out pattern, a very successful pass. Lanise keeps those legs driving, picks up a little bit more yardage, scrambles up to the first down. They've got four more tries to run that clock down, and we're just about to the two minutes. Not a warning, but two-minute time. Cooper gets a couple, protecting that football. Jason Buck, 99. Sanders, 59. All of us at NBC Sports, NBC Sports want to take a moment, certainly thank the Florida Citrus Sports Association for all their help. Thanks to the executive director, Chuck Rowe, to Dylan Thomas, to Carol Monroe, John Cole, and the rest of the staff for all of their help this week. And to President Manny Garcia, who's been a wonderful host. And to the great folks in the Orlando area. 1.20 to play. 
Buckeyes lead it 10 to 7. Woolridge, penalty marker goes down as Woolridge got it to the 42, maybe the 43. Futrell 75 and Steve Sanders 59 on the stop. Holding against Ohio State. And Earl Bruce will not like that call because that's going to stop the clock with a minute 15 left. It's going to be a big penalty marched off against Ohio State. And it's just about time for BYU to start using their timeouts to control the clock. Earl Bruce, the man who was encouraged to go into coaching by Woody Hayes. Laval Edwards, the head man of the Cougars. This 1985 Florida Citrus Classic. Great. Just a great game. All right. Here's Ohio State, third down and five. Down the sideline, too long, intended for Mike Lanise. And BYU's going to get the football one more time. A minute and nine left. Garcado's a little upset there. Something went wrong for him. Lavelle Edwards Club will have another opportunity. He's coached more games and more years and had the best winning percentage. Any coach, of course, in Cougar history. And right now, his Cougars are going to need a big play to pull it off here as Tom Tupa will do the putting. And by Sikahema goes downfield, and he can make the big play. He's had a frustrating day today. Turned it over a couple of times. One crucial time inside the one-yard line. That fumble really hurt BYU. They're coming after the ball. Wait a minute. There's a whistle on the play. Oh, if that's Sikahema, an offside. Sikahema feels it. Now, let's see what the call's going to be. Oh, if they call offside against BYU. Oh, boy. No, it's a delay of delay game, game call. Game. Yeah. But if Robbie Bosco ever wanted to rejuvenate his offense, now's the time to do it. He really, you know, we talked about it. He's 24 and 2 when he starts a quarterback. And with the score 10 to 7, I'm reminded that the Cougars lost 24 to 7 to Utah State in 1978. That was the last time this team was not in double figures in scoring 94 straight games. So a great deal of credit must go to the Buckeyes today for what they've done on defense. On occasion, BYU self-destructed. They're still going to have an opportunity. Sikahema looking up into the sun. He's got it to the 25, bobbled it. Look out. Free ball. Ohio State says they have it. I think he may have called. The referee came in from the sideline. I think he signaled BYU's ball that the ball was dead on the ground. You cannot pile on. Of course, you can't get up and run with the ball, so they may, in fact, give it to BYU. BYU football with 56 seconds remaining. A lot of Ohio State fans that don't like it. Now, watch this here. You'll see he misjudges the ball, comes down. Now, once he touches the ball, and he's down, right there. That ball is down. It's dead. There, even though the ball is laying out there and Ohio State recovers it, of course, they can't get up and run with it. 38-yard punt. Sikahema has had a little trouble holding on to that football today, but here are the Cougars with a chance to pull it out. Bosco throws complete to Miles. Miles, who caught the BYU touchdown, you'll remember, late in the first half. He's out of bounds. Coverage by William White. White, who came off with a big interception in the end zone. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. 50 seconds remaining to be played. And, Jay, I can't think of a better quarterback in this situation than Robbie Bosco. When he's hot, he is deadly. You saw Gary Webster, the field goal kicker. He might get a chance to tie it. Complete to Bellini. Bellini out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Coverage over there again by William White. White thought about trying to take that ball away, but I think thought better of it because if he had made the play for it and hadn't gotten it, he might have been able to turn it downfield. Coaches will always take you, tell you, make the sure tackle in that situation. Don't get burned for the deep one. First down, Cougars. called incomplete as Bosco again got tremendous pressure from the Buckeyes 
Eric Cromero, the sophomore from River Forest, Illinois, number 14, was leading the way. And Pepper Johnson. Pepper Johnson, Johnson has been in there all day long. We called his number a lot. Fine player he is. 34 seconds remaining to be played. to the Jet New England game as soon as this one is over. This one is thrown too wide for Bellini to come up with. 28 seconds left. Jay, when I was down in the field before the game, I talked to Ormsby, who is a, a kickoff specialist That's for this right. team, for BYU, and he told me he kicked a 70-yard field goal. Now, we've got a young quarterback that's right behind us here, <laughs> and maybe for, by, for BYU, maybe he could clarify that, but Ormsby but does have the leg to kick. I saw him kick. He has a magnificent strength in that leg. Young man from New Zealand. A 70 yard field goal. Bosco does not see the Cumbery. Cumbero coming from the backside, number 14. He's fortunate just to get this ball off, but you can see the pressure he's on got hit in the back of the head, and we may see that lengthy field goal. Fourth down. Now it's going to be fourth down, and they're set up with Bosco. Fourth and ten. Bosco rolling to the right side. group from BYU. If they kicked it from here, it'd be a 51-yard attempt. 17 seconds remaining. One timeout left. Bosco throws it out there. That is, a Mooley who is out of bounds near the 30-yard line. It would be about a 47-yarder from there. Ten seconds remaining. One timeout left for the Cougars. It's hard to believe that a game can come down to ten seconds and a field goal kicker, but that's what it looks like right now. Now, there's Ormsby. That's the man we told you that can kick a 70-yard field goal, but they just didn't think he could kick it. But they have Gary Webster, who is their more accurate field goal kicker from shorter distances. Now, Ormsby or Webster may get the call. Such a great 